Universalist Congregation of Erie. I am Reverend Christina Church, and I am pleased and privileged to serve this wonderful congregation as its minister. Today's service is International Day of Balance in honor of the autumnal equinox. And as per our tradition, we will start with the bells calling us to service. So if you have brought a bell, you may please unmute yourself now and we will allow the bells to draw us into a time of deeper contemplation. Thanks, everyone. And now if you could mute yourselves once again, so we won't have too many. Sorry. And I believe the host muted you, so you didn't even have to do that. It was done. It was done for you. And now Christine Linky and Doug Mitchell will perform our welcoming song. Whoever you are, we welcome you. Wherever you come from, we welcome you. Whomever you love, we welcome you. Whoever you are, we welcome you. Wherever you come from, we welcome you. Whomever you love, we welcome you. Wonderful. Our opening words this morning are Words for Equinox by Lori Gorgas Hlaban. Pause. Balanced in the center between the longest and shortest days, equinox. The wheel of the year turns and turns again. The air cools, the days shorten, the very sun seems to weaken, barely clearing the horizon after rising before beginning its descent. This is an opportunity now to pause, balanced, Breathing in, breathing out, knowing this present moment. This present moment is all we were ever guaranteed. Like the sun moving toward the shortest day, each moment arises and is gone before we know it. This is the time to pause and consider as we enter the season of contemplation, of increasing darkness, of lying fallow, of dormancy. This is the season of letting go, of lightening our burdens, preparing for a long period of being still, going deep. So pause, breathe in, 
breathe out. This is the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. Lashana Tova to all who celebrate. May your new year be sweet. May it be filled with blessings. Pause. Breathe in relatively clean air. Breathe out a prayer for those in the West choking today on smoke and ash. May they be well. May we all be well. Pause and breathe in the attention to, to vote your UU values on behalf of all, on behalf of all unable to do so because they're clinging to life on a ventilator, or on behalf of those 200,000 and more in this country who've perished right. from COVID-19. Okay. Breathe out gratitude and resolve Pause and consider. Dark and light, hot and cold, chaos and order. Neither extreme is inherently good or bad. It's all a matter of balance, of honoring the spectrum for which the binaries only mark the endpoints. Today, we mark the midpoint between summer and winter solstice, a time to seek balance a time to be free. Blessed be and amen. Now is the time in our service when we light a chalice. So if you have a chalice or even a candle, please join me in this ritual of our faith and the words for the chalice lighting will appear on your screen. You can say them with me. We light our chalice to remind us to use our powers to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to bless and not to curse, to serve the spirit of freedom. And we have another hymn, the Meditation on Breathing, and it will be performed by Christine and Doug once again. And feel free to sing along with yourself muted um, with them if you know it and would like to sing. Breathing, breathing. When I breathe in, I'll breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I'll breathe out love. When I breathe in, I'll breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I'll breathe out love. When I breathe in, when I breathe in, I'll breathe in. When I breathe out, when I breathe out, I'll breathe out love. When I breathe in, when I breathe in, I'll breathe in peace. When I breathe out, when I breathe out, I'll breathe out love. When I breathe in, I'll breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I'll breathe out. When I breathe in, I'll breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I'll breathe out Thank you, Doug and Christine. And now we'll recite together the 1898 Bond of Union. 
and the words will appear on your screen. We unite ourselves together for the study and practice of morality and religion as interpreted by the growing thought and noblest lives of humanity, believing that we may thereby prove helpful one to another and promote the cause of truth, righteousness, and love in the world. And would someone uh, be willing to recite the children's bond of union? I'm happy to do it. Okay, thank you, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> so, everybody, are you ready? We are Unitarian Universalists, the people of the open mind, loving hearts, and welcoming hands. All right, thank you. And speaking of welcoming hands, we are going to do a little activity uh, for all ages today. So if you feel like doing an activity, um, you might want to grab a piece of paper and a pen or pencil and some scissors if you have them. If not, that's okay. You can just uh, you can just watch along at home, and I'll I'll. Uh, show you how to do it, you can do it another time. We're going to make a little wheel of life balance. So this is a, an activity that we actually did in a ministry retreat and I've adapted it a little bit for all ages today. So basically what you need is just a piece of paper with, um, I, I've cut mine in a circle, but you can also just draw a piece of paper uh, you can also just draw a circle on your piece of paper and you're going to make, um, I folded mine. Did you ever make snowflakes when you were a kid or if you still are a kid, I still like to make them every year. Um, so you can fold, um, like fold your paper in half and then fold it that half into thirds. And then that gives you some lines to draw your little kind of spokes of your wheel. And so I was thinking about balance today and the way that there are so many good things in our lives and sometimes we just don't have enough time for them all, right? And a lot of times in our modern life, we get kind of strung out because we don't have enough hours in the day for all the things we need to do or want to do. So this is a good way of kind of, maybe we could do it once or twice a year if we did it on the autumn equinox and the spring equinox we'd be doing it every six months and um, it's just a way to kind of look at your life and see where you're at with things and what what you want to work on and how how the balance in your life is flowing so you've got your six panels here and uh, what i did for the all ages activity was I was thinking about things like uh, exercise and rest. So I'm going to put exercise on one side and rest on the other. Um, for adults, it might be, um, you know, getting enough sleep and um, going to the gym or, or whatever it might be. Um, for kids, it might be playing outside. Um, So forth. Okay, and those are those are going to go in opposite one another because even though they're not opposites, they're sort of um, they're kind of ends on a spectrum, right? You when you're at rest, you're you're very quiet, and then when you're exercising, you're very active. So, um, and then I thought another category could be um, playtime and school time playtime and school time, where adults, it might be leisure time and work, right? Um, but we're going to say playtime and school time here. And playtime could be like screen time too, right? Um, that's one of the things that we're kind of noticing with my son is that 
Um, my son Rafa, he's in fourth grade and he's been spending lots of time uh, both playing and going to school on screens. And so all of a sudden there's a lot of that in his life. So we've got plate time and school time. And then the other one I thought about was um, giving and receiving. So giving might be the time and the, the things that you do to help out the family or ways that you're kind with your friends or um, things that you do for others. And then receiving is, you know, receiving things from others, um, you know, being helped, being, um, you know, taught by your teacher or having your parents uh, help you with things. Okay, so we have giving and receiving. And then we're just gonna go around and look at those and we're gonna decide where am I in my life right now with giving? Do I, do I do as much of it as I want to? Or do I kind of think I ought to do more? Or do I wish I were doing more giving? And if you're an adult, it could be, um, how much do I give to my community? How much do I do of something outside myself, right? And then receiving might be, am I happy with my income? Am I happy with my you know, what's going on with my partner? Um, am I, you know, am I happy in my friendships? Things like that. Okay, and so I'm just going to be, um, I'm gonna pretend I'm my son and I'm gonna mark these according to what I think he should do. So what it is is um, if, you, if you think you're about at 50%, you could mark it right here, right? If you're about, if you're only doing about half as much as you could for others. If you're, if you're all the way up to the top, you could mark it at the very outward edge of the wheel, okay? So you'll end up with a kind of a picture that has different, uh, different levels, and maybe he's really had it up to here with school time, so I'm gonna put it way up at the top. Maybe he's not getting as much rest as he was hoping he could. Maybe he... Um, wishes that he had some more time with friends right now. And so basically what you do is you just kind of fill it out like this and you'll end up with a little kind of graph of your life with a little pie chart of your life, we could say. And um, maybe in the spring we should do this on pie day. Actually, that would be good. Um, and you can put it up on your wall. Oh. I see Howard has one, very nice. You can put it up on your wall or you can um, kind of take it out and look at it every once in a while. And it's a good reminder of, you know, like on this one, I would say, well, where do I want to put my energy right now? It looks like I'm really not getting enough rest. So I'm going to try and get that rest up a little bit better to, to be even with the other ones where I'm happy with it. Um, and maybe I'm feeling like school time is okay right now. I'm getting plenty of that. So I don't, you know, school's going along okay and I'm doing plenty of it. So I don't really need to work on that one right now. Um, exercise, maybe I'm not quite getting enough exercise. So maybe I can find a way to go outside and play a little bit more often or um, do some jumping jacks or walk the dog around the block. So that's just a, a little wheel of balance that we can use to really help us see ourselves in a different way and help us realize what it is that we most need to work on in our lives to achieve health and balance and wellness and happiness. So, enjoy those and you can change them in any way you want. You can always do an eight uh, spoke wheel instead of a six or you can make your own categories for your own things. But that's a fun way to do it where you can really see what you need to work on. Okay. All right. I see a few people made some wheels and I'm assuming the rest of you are just going to work on it later on when you get off of the Zoom. 
All right, well, thanks for participating in that. And now I'd like to talk to you some more about our topic today, the International Day of Balance, which is how I had envisioned a world holiday based on the autumn and spring equinox where all of us, all of us on this planet are experiencing the very same thing, which is the evening out of the days, no matter where we live, uh, the effects are felt, of course, more strongly at the poles than they are at the equator, but all of us experience a little bit of balance in our days and our nights during this time. And it's very different than the solstices where the two extremes are um, the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere are, are experiencing very different things. So as I thought about what I wanted to say to you today, I thought about this, this holiday that we would devise, the International Day of Balance, where we would all kind of look at our lives and make some assessments and say, well, you know, what, uh, what's working well and what do I need to tweak a little bit or how can I achieve the balance that I'm looking for in my life, in our community, in our congregation, and hopefully in our world. So this sounded like a great idea a month ago. I would talk about maybe how I have these little rituals at home, like, um, changing my toothbrush at the solstices and at the equinoxes because you know you're supposed to change your toothbrush every three months and um and it just helps me to remember to do that to do it on the equinox but it also helps to uh make it feel like a little ritual right like a little um we're starting fresh now we're starting in a new part of the wheel of the year and i'm starting with a new filter on my water pitcher and a new toothbrush and uh, some other things that I like to remember to do at that time. And then maybe I would talk about the way that all the people uh, all over the world celebrate the equinox because it usually is celebrated in, in most cultures. And it's usually celebrated surprisingly, not so surprisingly, as a day of balance because day and night are roughly the same length. And I thought I would talk about harvest festivals and the way that the days and the nights even up and, and prompt us to meditate on, on balance. And don't get me wrong, it's never a bad idea to contemplate your life and to look at how the different aspects of the way you're living are balancing out. But this morning, this morning in the the wreckage of the landscape uh, following the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I would say that we have ample evidence of terrifying imbalances in our system. And I'm still struggling with the, the distance between the topic that I've chosen this morning and the reality of what we are living in. Uh, I say that it's terrifying because if the death of one frail elderly woman means that more people will likely suffer or die in our country, if one woman, her body racked with pain and disease must, must hang on until the bitter end, hoping to eke out a few more months of life so that we can hold our democracy together, then something is terribly out of whack. Now, I think most of us knew this before, but Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death is, is yet another revelation of the terrible inequities and imbalances to be found here in the richest, most powerful, most privileged country on earth. And I'm ashamed to say too, that when I learned of her death, my first reaction was shock and grief. And my second swift upon it was despair at the political calculus that I quickly turned to. 
Now, as we approach the election, I know that you all in Erie, Pennsylvania are finding yourselves inundated with political propaganda. And I can only imagine the tension that you're experiencing now in your minds, in your bodies, in your lives. And so I find that what I want to say to you this morning is very, very different than what I imagined originally. And I find that there are two cycles of nature that I want to talk to you about. They don't have anything to do with harvest festivals. I want to think about the way that an in-breath follows an out-breath. I want in this time of continually raised stakes, while we're all braced for the shock of whatever comes next, I want us all to remember just to breathe. And I want to say to you today, just release whatever tension you're holding right now in your neck, in your belly, in your shoulders. Just take a good cleansing breath and unstick your tongue from the roof of your mouth and let the air just flow through you. And then do it again. And then again. This is how people get through difficult times. This is how they've always gotten through difficult times. And we will too. And I also want to remember, as I did this morning when I heard them, I want to remind you of the way that wild geese fly for long distances right around this time of year. Remember that they take turns. They take turns leading the V formation and they drop back when they need to rest. Now do not imagine that any of us, any of us is expendable. And do not imagine that any of us is so indispensable that we cannot rest when we're tired. Even the goose resting at the back of the V is staying in formation, staying in community, traveling with the group. Resting is part of the cycle of activity. And if you don't balance activism with rest and renewal, you will burn out. So rest when you need to, and then rejoin the activity. This too is how we will live through difficult times. Now, I thought I wanted to talk to you about the Buddhist festival of Higan A, an honoring of impermanence, and how Buddhists believe that this time of year is auspicious for achieving peace and harmony and balance in your life and your home and your family. Instead, it feels like we have all been walloped with so many reminders of impermanence. It feels like we're grasping for something that isn't crumbling under our gaze, our lands, our democracy, the health and well being we've enjoyed for so many years, we've started to take it for granted. Now, instead, I desperately want to bottle and can and give you the gift of equanimity. This is a Buddhist virtue that signifies patience and good humor and calm under all circumstances. Now for me, it's a very elusive state of mind, or at least it is for me. But if we can cultivate that inner peacefulness, we can find that we'll weather the storms of life. Even, even the 50 storms that we are currently undergoing, even the election, even the pandemic, and even whatever happens next. 
Well, friends, I thought I wanted to talk to you about Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. I thought I wanted to talk to you about the cycle of atonement and reconciliation to recover the balance of right relationship when one has transgressed against another being or against God. Instead, I find I want to talk to you about Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and one very special person who left this world on the night of the Jewish New Year and left this world poorer for her passing. I'm sure you'll agree, no matter what your politics, that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was an extraordinary human being and an extraordinary American. Now, Jews say that those who pass from the world on Rosh Hashanah are tzaddik, or righteous ones. Now, here is a little more explanation of that epithet by writer Molly Conway. When Jews speak of righteousness, it is never with the idea of an eternal reward. We work to be good humans to others and ourselves because justice and peace are their own rewards. We don't know what happens next, but we know what happens here, and that is enough. The pursuit of justice is one of the highest callings of Judaism, and it should not be misinterpreted as vengeance or punishment. No, the ideas of justice and sustainability are inextricably linked in Judaism. A system that is unjust cannot sustain and a system that is unsustainable cannot be just. It is said that a person who passes on Rosh Hashanah is a tzedek, a good and righteous person. And when we speak of tzedakah, the word is often translated as charity, but it's more accurate to say righteousness. Sadaka can take many forms, including monetary donation, but it's important to note that sadaka is not a benevolent contribution given to be kind or nice to those who need it. No, it is to be viewed as a balancing of the scales, an active working towards justice. To use a simple example, one should donate to the local food bank not to gain favor with God, or to be nice to those with less than us, but because it is unjust for anyone to be without food, especially while others have plenty. Correcting injustice, balancing the scales, evaluating the distribution of power and creating equity is tzedakah, the work of righteousness. Now, similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Maimonides, the Jewish philosopher, wrote in the Middle Ages that there were eight levels of tzedakah. Now, the highest results in self-sufficiency, or rather, it's an act that creates a sustainable form of justice. Teaching a man to fish is an extremely reductionist view of this idea, but it's, it's a start. The real meat of it is the idea that charity is good, but eliminating the need for charity, systemic change, is better. The second highest form of tzedakah is where both the giver and the receiver are unknown to each other. This allows for both the dignity of the recipient and for the giver to be free from personal motivation and reward. In other words, we should create a more just world for the benefit of people that we don't even know without the expectation of praise, gratitude, or reward in this life or the next. In other words, our justice work should not be performative. Now, when we say that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a tzaddikit, the feminine form of tzaddik, we don't just mean that she was a nice person. What we're saying is that she was a thoughtful person who worked tirelessly to create a more just world, one that would perpetuate equality 
access, one that wasn't reliant on charity, one that was better for people she did not even know, without any expectation of praise or fame, although she achieved both in her lifetime. And that is what it means to be at Sadaket. So when we say, may her memory be for blessing, Molly Conway wants you to know that the blessing we speak of is not just may we remember her fondly or may her memory be a blessing for us. The blessing implied is this, may you be more like Ruth. Jewish thought teaches us that when a person dies, it is up to those who bear her memory to keep her goodness alive. We do this by remembering her. We do this by speaking her name. We do this by carrying on her legacy. We do this by continuing to pursue justice, righteousness, and sustainability. So when you hear Jews say, may her memory be for blessing, you don't hear, it's nice to remember her. You should hear, it's up to us to carry on her legacy. When you hear them say, she was a sadeket, don't hear, she was a very nice person. Hear, she was a worker for justice. So, to take something away from that reading, we balance the scales by working for justice in this world. On this, my proposed holiday, the International Day of Balance, I just want to leave you with these four thoughts. Breathe in, breathe out. Take care of your body. Two, fly in a V formation. Do what you can to help and then rest when you need to. Be in it for the long haul. Three, cultivate equanimity. Now for some people that might mean meditation or yoga, but for others it could mean a daily run, time away, time in nature, or finding joy in little moments throughout the day. I'm sure you know what works for you. Just remember not to neglect it. You matter. And finally, number four, be like Ruth. Work for justice every day. Find something outside yourself that matters to you and give yourself to it. My friends, someday, someday, this election cycle will be over. And someday, even 2020 will finally come to an end. Someday, the pandemic will even be in the rearview mirror. And until then, this is how we must find our balance. This is how we care for ourselves and our community. This is how we fiercely resist. This is how we work for balance, equity, and justice. So be it. Blessed be, and may we all go out and make it so. And now, as a little tribute to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I would like to sing a little song to sing her out. And you may sing along if you'd like, it's from our hymnal, um, but please do keep yourself muted during, um, due to the limitations of singing together on Zoom. This is called May Your Life Be As a Song. And I think that it describes Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life. The words are, may your life be as a song, resounding with the dawn to sing awake the light and softly serenade the stars, ever dancing circles in the night. May your life be as a song, resounding with the dawn to sing awake the light 
and softly serenade the stars ever dancing circles in the night. May your life be as a song resounding with the dawn to sing awake the light and softly serenade the stars ever dancing circles in the night. May your life be as a song resounding with the dawn to sing awake the light and softly serenade the stars ever dancing circles in the night ever dancing circles in the night ever dancing circles in the night And now is the time for the sharing of joys and concerns. Jackson will play a sonata by Beethoven. And you're invited to share what is on your heart today in the chat box. We will follow it with a brief moment of silence after which we will have a moment to um, express all of the joys and concerns that have been shared today.
Today we hold in our hearts all those who are suffering around the world in sadness and those who are celebrating in joy. Today you shared feelings of appreciation for being together today and hearing a message of hope. Uh, there were some fears expressed and, and um, worries about the political cycle sadness at the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, joy at the wonders of nature and the regeneration cycle, sadness for congregant um, who is experiencing an illness, and the joy of a new rite of passage, a new wedding, a new family being created. And for these and for all the joys and concerns that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we are with you. Our closing words today are from Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. If you want to be a true professional, you will do something outside yourself, something to repair tears in your community, something to make life a little better for people less fortunate than you. That's what I think a meaningful life is living not for oneself, but for one's community. May her memory be for blessing. May her memory be for revolution. And may we be a credit to her name. And now we will extinguish our chalice if you lit one or lit a candle, please join me in the extinguishing. And the words for our spoken ritual will be on your screen. We extinguish our chalice, but the burning coal of justice remains in our hearts, seeking equity, balance, and freedom for all. May we become its promise and its fulfillment. And now Jackson will gift us with crystal silence.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming to our service. And are there any announcements that people would like to share? Mary? Greg Blackman and I uh, have an announcement to make. So I'll let Greg go first. Okay, I'm, I'm unmuted, all right. I, I just wanted to let people know that UU The Vote PA is having a, a, a kind of start off event uh, called All Hands on Deck um, and uh, at 1.30 today. There'll be an opportunity for phone and text banking if you want to take part in that. You, you, the Vote PA is a good spot for other opportunities to, to help out in, in the upcoming uh, election. Um, and uh, there'll be more information available on that in the next beacon. So, thanks. Is it a Zoom link? Is it, is it a Zoom link, Greg? The, the the link isn't working right. I couldn't get the link in there, but uh, mm -hmm. if you just go to UU the Vote PA or uh, UU Plan, uh, they will have a link to that too. So if you go to UU Plan, UU Plan has changed their name, but uh, that's still on the website. So, um, but if you go to UU Plan uh, dot org, you'll uh, be able to get to the uh, uh, PA. Uh, UU the vote PA uh, information. Thank you. Greg, is, are you saying that the link that uh, Joanne put in the weekly news isn't working? Okay. Okay, so going to the website is best then. Okay. okay. Uh, it looks like Nancy has a, Nancy Lori has an announcement too. Good morning, everyone. Yes, I wanted to let you know that the WQLN uh, pledge drive, which all of you listeners, I'm sure, um, know that it's still on there because we get interrupted a bit. Um, so we uh, decided that we would have a group called Friends of Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Erie that will um, donate as a group to WQLN and for that be able to get public service announcements. So uh, we, are, we are a little over 750 right now, which, um, which will allow us to get some, but there's a big jump between 750 and $1,000. If, if we can get it to 1,000 bucks, we can get 40 of them, which really gives us one for almost each week for, you know, that, and I think that would really have, give us an opportunity to, to widen our message into the community with a lot of like-minded folks. So if you, uh, that's, that's only maybe, you know, five $50 pledges. So if you, um, if you've been thinking about doing it and, um, and you hadn't decided, or maybe uh, just hadn't gotten around to it, if you could uh, send an email to Joanne uh, with your pledge and then send your check directly to you, uh, UUCE made out to us with WQLN in the line. If you send it to WQLN, um, it won't count in our total. Uh, they still get the money, but but it won't it won't help our our efforts. So uh, we have probably another week or so before that pledge drives up. So um, if you've been thinking about it, please do. Thanks. Thank you, Nancy. Mary. No need to remember that if you oh. send something to the UUCE. By mail, it should go to the post office box because they don't deliver mm -hmm. to the door. Mm -hmm. Post office box has been in the email, so that's a handy spot to look for it. Um, and I think it's probably someplace on our website as well. Uh, but Joanne can definitely supply it. Nancy, I thought I saw something that says September 17th, that that was, has it been extended or did I misread that? Uh, you did not misread that. That was when I checked with QLN. They told me that that was the original date where the national uh, pledge drive time frame was. Um, but because the local um, station continues to raise money until they hit their number, uh, she she did make it clear we we can do it anytime. 
Um, I'm actually hoping that if we finally get our final number, we can find one that has a matching. Sometimes they have matching things. So no, we, we were uh, to ask about that. We uh, are able to keep going until we hit it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I think Mary was next. Mary's been waiting. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we, we also found out that there is going to be Gather the Spirit, which is a UUA event, September 23rd. And the UUA president will be speaking, as well as UU the Vote national coordinator and a, and a few other uh, people. And it's going to be called Harvesting the Power of Our Faith in 2020. And um, to register, you go to uu.vote backslash gather or forward slash. I never know what those slashes are. <laughs> gather. And it will be on the 23rd, uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. So I'll, I'll ask Joanne to, to send that out. I apologize. They were supposed to be in the announcements, but I didn't um, get it to the right people at the right time. So anyhow, it's a way to pull all of the UUs together with sort of a gathering uh, emphasis on UU the vote. And as Greg said, we'll have more information on things that the congregation specifically can do um, for you, you, the vote PA. That'll come out on the first and the second. <clears throat> Thank you. Tom? You need to unmute yourself. I don't know if I can do that from here. Let's see. There you um, go. I visited Doug Russell yesterday, mm -hmm. and he was in good spirits and was much like his uh, his pre-war self. I guess it's still very much up in the air as to what the, the final light outcome will be, but, but uh, it, was, it was enjoyable, and I guess that's his, his major visits, or what gets him through the day, because he, he's not a television person, and uh, so I guess he'd rather have people around him. That's it. Tom, could I also add, uh, Pat and I got a chance to visit with him, and he mentioned a couple of times during that visit that he loved to get short texts, and uh, that let him know that people were thinking about him and he could respond back. So if any of you have a minute to text him, um, I know he really enjoys getting those. Nice. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there anyone that I'm not seeing? Because I'm not seeing everybody on my screen. I don't see any raised hands. I'm gonna. I'm gonna raise. My, I was okay. If I hey, sorry guys. My my computer crashed at the beginning. I'll I'll do an extra special prelude next time, or okay. something. Okay. <laughs> sorry. It's all right. Thank you. All right, well, I think, oh, I see another hand, Tom. I just want to add a, a PS. Uh, I've got uh, a lot of uh, vegan uh, food items, and I, I'd be proud and happy to uh, give them to somebody else. <laughs> okay. So if anybody is interested, uh, uh, send me your email and I'll, and I'll uh, send you uh, my inventory. <laughs> Gotta go. Thank you, Tom. And uh, Al shared that Mary Desmond has a letter to the editor in today's Times News. So be sure and check that out. 
Thank you, Mary. All right, I think we've worked our way through the announcements and we're ready for our journey to breakout rooms. Hi, Nancy. Hi. I'm sorry, I was I busy think monitoring. I'm muting myself and I missed the uh, join button. Okay, well, I just put you into a room, so I guess I guess we're here. Uh, I was busy monitoring oh. the breakout rooms to make sure they were opening, and I think they have. Okay. Well, I'm getting a little note here that says in progress. So I guess that means you're all open. I'm, does that mean that you and I are a group or that? We, we are a group. It looks like a lot of people left before. Uh, oh, okay. So that made some of the rooms smaller. So I, I could whisk us to another room if you want to go to a bigger room. No, no. Okay. I function best with one person. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. That service went went was beautiful, wasn't it? It was so beautiful. So appropriate. Extremely. <sighs> I loved it last week when Greg but when Greg Blackman posted uh, on the joys that we hit the jackpot. Yes. I'm just jackpot. grateful to everyone who found Christina, mm -hmm. Reverend Christina. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. She's been very helpful to me. I yeah. think she's a good fit. I couldn't imagine how she could take on two congregations so far apart, but that's because my logic isn't keeping up with reality. <laughs> Well, we're all just sitting in front of a screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the hard part will be will come when uh, uh, the year is up, and, yes. and it, she may may have to do some driving, which is a, sh a shame. <laughs> I don't. I don't ever wish that on her. No. But she wishes. She would rather be doing the driving so she could see us in person. She's that kind of minister. Wow. Hmm. Well, I see. That, excuse me. I see that you did have a join button. 